हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू ईपीजी पाठशाला आई एम डॉक्टर सविता टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट द मॉड्यूल नीट ऑफ टूरिज्म लेजिस्लेशन अंडर द पेपर टूरिज्म एंड हॉस्पिटलिटी अंतरप्रेन्योरशिप एंड लीगल एनवायरनमेंट डियर स्टूडेंट्स after completing this module you will be able to understand various rules and regulations and laws applicable in the tourism industry the relevance of certain important laws in tourism and also know about the present laws regulations in the country in india practically all aspect relating to tourism are governed by a particular legislation which directly or indirectly affect tourism these laws can be categorized under heads as mentioned in the later part of chapter of the below mentioned laws applicable to tourism explanation of some important laws is given in this module first of all we will discuss consumer protection act 1986 consumerism in india is beginning to establish an identity of its own almost 30 consumer oriented legislations the impact of new professionals working in the media the springing up of various active consumer associations have all contributed to the change the consumer protection act 1986 provides the impetus and an extremely good opportunity for the aggrieved indian consumer this act incorporates provisions which ensure consumers with effective safeguards against unfair trade practices indulged in by both the manufacturer and the public utility services it provides for the consumer protection councils at central level and state level to uphold promote and protect consumer rights This act also provides the consumer complaint redressal system with the district meetings at the district level the state commission at the national commission in new delhi and the state level business and commercial laws since tourism is an industry hence the following business and commercial laws are relevant to tourism industry the indian contract act 1872 negotiable instrument act 1881 consumer protection act 1986 shops and establishment act state specific health protection act no smoking laws 1996 Sale of Goods Act 1930, the Partnership Act 1932, the National Commission, State Commission, and District Forum must decide complaints either inside three months after the time of communication received by the conflicting party. where the objection doesn't need investigation or analysis of products and within 5 months if it needs investigation or examination of products depending on the type of liberation requested by the consumer the redress 
forum might pass directions for any of the following either the elimination of filling from the commodities substitution of the commodities reimbursement of the cost paid or grant reparation for the loss of damage suffered fine and imprisonment are provided for as penalties if its orders are not implemented appeal against the district forums decision may be filed before the state commission in a time frame of 30 days demand in contradiction of the state commission's judgment can be filed before the national commission within 30 days petition in contradiction of the national commission's order can be filed before the supreme court within 30 days background in december 1986 five major consumer protection legislation namely the essential commodities act 1955 the prevention of food adulteration act 1954 the drug and cosmetic act 1940 the monopolies and restrictive trade practice act 1969 the agriculture produce grading and marketing act 1985 were amended to empower consumers and listed consumer organizations to file grievances in court enactment of the act 1986 is one of the most important step in protecting the rights of consumers and promoting a solid and far reaching based consumers movement in the country the salient features of the consumer protection act are the act affects to all products and services it shelters all segments that is public private and cooperatives etc it enshrines the six rights of consumers that is right to seek redressal right to consumer education right to safety right to be informed right to choose and right to be heard it envisions formation of consumer protection council at the state and central levels whose chief goal is to encourage and safeguard the right of users it provides speedy simple and cheap redressal to user complaints with regard to faulty goods deficient services unfair trade practices etc do a three tier quasi judicial redressal equipment at district national and state level a complaint up to rupees 1 lakh can be filed in the consumer disputes redressal forum that is district forum between 1 lakh to 10 lakhs in the consumer disputes redressal commission that is state commission and complaint above the 10 lakh can be filed the national consumer disputes redressal commission the national commission and state commissions have appellate and revisionary jurisdictions also the requirement of the act as non negotiable in nature the procedure for filing the complaint in above redressal agencies is very simple 
a objection can be filed on a plain paper in text the assistance of lawyer is not required there is no fee for filing a objection all the requirements of the consumer protection act 1986 came into force on 1st july 1987 throughout the country except jammu and kashmir that passed its own legislation in this field all the states union territories have constituted the state level consumer protection councils the central consumer protection council was formed on 1st june 1987 the council have meanwhile have been constituted on 23rd of august 1990 the national commission started functioning on 27th december 1988 with justice mr v b aradi as president till now 30 state commissions and 447 district forums have started functioning amendments on 21st june 1993 the government issued an ordinance to amend cpa to make it more effective and people oriented which is very similar to the consumer protection amendment bill 1993 it provides for enabling consumer organizations and consumer to file grievances in respect of goods whose use could be hazardous to life and safety like drugs and food products being sold after expiry dates against traders who adopt restrictive trade practices on behalf of a group of consumers with a common interest in respect of services relating to housing self employed persons could seek redressal in respect of the goods purchased by them to earn their living for enlarging the scope of the act the redress for a have also been conferred additional powers to order withdrawal of goods likely to endanger life and safety removal of deficiency from services and toward cost for a limited time frame of 1 year from filing complaints and authorize the state government to constitute another forum in a district wherever necessary for constitution of selection committees at the state and national level and to choose non judicial members of redressal agencies consumer welfare fund a consumer welfare fund was instituted on the consumer day march 19 1994 The announcement of the formation of the fund was made by Civil Supplies Minister A K Antony while giving away the national awards for consumer protection in New Delhi. The Consumer Welfare Fund consists of the amount of excise or custom duties which are not refundable. to manufacturers or importers the money thus accruing to the fund would be used for promoting the welfare of consumers and the objective of the fund was to strengthen the consumer movement in the country and to assist voluntary organizations in spreading consumer education antony also formally invited applications from voluntary consumer organizations for availing assistance under the fund the total quantum of help on 
and separate request should not surpass rupees 5 lakh however larger assistance could be considered in very exceptional cases the application should be required to meet 10% expenditure from his own resources in exceptional cases this also could be relaxed industrial and labor laws as per the recommendations of national development council for tourism to be accorded the status of an industry in pursuance of these recommendations the ministry of tourism has been able to secure for tourism the status of an industry in the states of arunachal pradesh uttar pradesh himachal pradesh meghalaya kerala andhra pradesh tamil nadu haryana bihar tripura andaman and nicobar and goa while orissa rajasthan and west bengal have declared hotel as an industry hence it can be concluded that following industrial and labor laws are also applicable to tourism industry also payment of wages act 1936 Industrial Dispute Act 1947 Industrial Standing Order Act 1946 The Minimum Wages Act 1948 Equal Remuneration Act 1976 The Factories Act 1948 Social and Welfare Laws as discussed earlier also regarding the industry status to the tourism following social and welfare laws are also applicable the employees provident fund and miscellaneous provisions act 1952 payment of gratuity act 1972 workmen compensation act 1923 licenses applicable in hotel organizations liquor license grant of liquor license to hotels restaurants clubs for service liquor registration of foreign license foreign exchange management act 1999 lodging house license eating house license fire and safety license foreign exchange regulation act 1973 swimming pool license public amusement license video games parlor license acts relating to accommodation organizations sarai act 1856 rent control act state specific public liability act 1991 cyber laws micro small and medium enterprises development act 2006 information technology act 2000 the sarais act 1867 sarais means any building used for the shelter and accommodation of the travelers and includes cases in which only part of the building is used as a sarai it also includes a purao place for night shelter for travelers so far as the requirements of the act are pertinent thereto the sarai's act 1867 regulate public sarai and puraos in many cities private hotel also covered under this law department of tourism regulations for categorization of hotels etc hotels are an 
essential element of the tourism industry as they provide in the complete tourism practice past the benchmarks of services and facilities presented by the hotels by the goal of offering modern benchmarks of services and amenities obtainable in the hotels the ministry of tourism has prepared a volunteer arrangement for categorization of working hotels that will be relevant to the above classes star category hotels 5 star 5 star deluxe 4 star 3 star 2 star and 1 star heritage category hotels heritage classic heritage grand and heritage basics taxation central sales tax 1956 income tax act 1961 customs act 1962 vat tax statutory provisions 1994 international laws related to hotels franchising act hotel management contract laws related with monuments and sites the ancient monuments and archaeological site and remedies act 1958 the ancient monument is described as any construction formation or monument or any place of amusement or any inscription cave monolith or rock sculpture that is of archaeological artistic interest or historical interest or any leftovers them of and includes the location of an ancient testimonial such percentage of plot touching the location of an prehistoric memorial as might necessary for covering or fencing in or else protecting such monuments the ways of entry to and suitable examination of a prehistoric monuments an act to offer for protection of historical and ancient memorials and archaeological locations and leftovers of national significance for the parameters of archaeological excavation and for the safeguard of carvings sculptures and other similar bodies under this act government of india is assured to preserve all national monuments below the particular acts referred to above and to guarantee that all of them are appropriately maintained so that the historical and cultural heritage of india and the attractiveness and of the monuments sculpture protected through breathless and passionate labor craftsmanship workmanship and the proficiencies of the indian architects artists and masons as persistent to be preserved in order to bring the act on par with the constitutional requirements and offering enhanced and efficient protection to the archaeological prosperity of the nation laws related with wildlife and environment the wildlife protection act 1972 the national green tribunal act 2010 environment protection act 1986 forest conservation act 
1980, the Wildlife Protection Act 1972, the Wildlife Protection Act formed in the year 1972 mentions to a wide bundle of laws passed in the year 1972 by the government of India. Amongst other transformation, the act started timetables of safeguarded animal and plant species. Shooting or harvesting these species was mostly banned. The act offer for the safety of birds and plant, wild animals, and for complications associated therewith. or subsidiary or supplementary thereto it has six plants that gives fluctuating unit of security list 1 and part 2 of list 2 offer complete security offenses under these are set the maximum punishments species registered in list 3 and list 4 are also safeguarded but the fines are much lesser list fifth comprises the creatures which may be hunted the plants in list sixth are banned for agriculture and planting the shooting to the execution specialists have the control to make crimes under this list that is they levy penalties on the law breakers till the year april 2010 there have been 16 sentences under this act involving to the killing of tiger it may be because of known efficiency of the administration the forest reservation act 1980 was created on to support the preservation the country's forests the act presently controls and orders the de-reservation of forests or usage of forest estate for known forest drives exclusive of the prior authorization of central government the act rests down the prerequisites for the alteration of forest property for known forest motives the air prevention and control of pollution act 1981 Air Control and Prevention of Pollution Act was passed in the year 1981 and modified in the year 1987 to offer for the conservation, regulate, and reduction of air pollution in the country. The Environment Protection Act 1986. The Environment Protection Act 1986 was. created in the year 19th november 1986 to offer for the conservation and enhancement of environment and for problems associated with the environment there are four key chapters and diverse clauses under different chapters which lay down the policies standards and act of environmental deprivations and plans for enhancement of environment and protection of human being from environmental threats problems the national green tribunal act 2010 national green tribunal act was started in the year 2010 in india's legal provision of article 21 that guarantees the residents of the country the right to a strong ecosystem under article 2 of the charter of fundamental rights of the european union that supports the right to life
the tribunal himself is a superior advanced court to control the quick clearance of the event related to ecological problems concerns laws related with tourists foreigners act 1946 passport act 1967 laws related with transportation MACT 1988 baggage amendment rules 2006 Motor Vehicle Act 1988 Aircraft Act 1934 The Carriage by Air Act 1972 Criminal Acts Indian Penal Code 1860 Criminal Procedure Code 1973 Evidence Act 1872 Indian Penal Code 1860 Indian Penal Code created in the year 1860 is the chief criminal code of india it is a complete code anticipated to shield all substantive sides of criminal law criminal procedure code 1973 the code of criminal procedure is the foremost legislation on process for management of substantive criminal law in the country it offers the equipments for the examination of crime worry of suspended criminals gathering of proof resolve of guilt or innocence of the suspect person and the resolving of penalty of the guilty crimes against foreigners in india following are the examples of fierce crime touching international tourists in india most of the crimes happen against international tourists only scams relating trade of jewelries occurs in india that target overseas residents roaming alone in isolated zones after dark is of actual danger to foreign tourists police records say at least 14 foreign tourists most of them young travelers have disappeared from the part in recent years economic conditions and unemployment also influence criminality to a considerable extent because the canadian british and american citizens buying power is comparatively high competed to the overall indian community as they are the favorite target for theft and other severe offense unemployment among the youth is also cause of crime today the youth indulge in crime because of their extravagant and expensive lifestyle they believe in show off want to keep motorbikes cars costly mobile phones want to wear branded clothes which is not easy for unemployed youths to maintain so they indulge in crime and the tourists become the easy target since they are outsiders and are not familiar with the roads theft of camera mobile phones chain snatching and other valuables of tourists is becoming common these days in the year april 1999 swaraj damdi a traveler from mauritius was helped by a group of indian people who later held him in 25 days of custody they cheated him of cash amounting to us dollar 1500 seized his traveler's check bracelet gold chain wrist watch two bags and suitcase in the year 2000 two german tourists stood gunshot in himachal pradesh 
after some week later two spanish travelers stood murdered in himachal pradesh by burglars petty crime petty crime like pickpocketing bag snatching etc is general in india robbery of foreign tourist valuables from baggage in buses and trains is usual tourists who are traveling solo are suffered of petty crimes like purse snatching and pickpockets purse snatching is usually done in the overcrowded parts or areas passport theft stealing passports of international tourists from their baggage in buses and trains is a very common crime in india stealing of us passport is seen usually especially in main tourist attraction areas rape and sexual assault events of sexual attack and rape against international visitors at famous tourist areas is rising in the country most of the suspected culprits are children of higher government administrators or statesmen in the year september 1994 gurkirat singh kotli grandson of the chief minister bayan singh was lest of kidnapping and attacking a french traveler katia darnand in chandigarh in the year march 2006 bitti mohanty son of higher police official in odisha raped a german girl in the city of alwar rajasthan a japanese lady was raped in pushkar rajasthan on april 2 2006 in june 2007 a south korean was raped close to manali in september 2007 two japanese girl were gang raped in agra a renowned tourist destination in india where the taj mahal is located men slaughter and murder the following are the recounted cases of international tourist stated killed or missing in india name graham stains age 58 male nationality australian date 22nd january 1999 circumstances burned to death by mob place manoharpur state odisha timothy stains age 7 sex male australian 22nd january 1991 burned to death by mob manoharpur odisha philip stains age 9 years male australian 22nd january 1999 circumstances burn to death by mob place manoharpur odisha michel blacke age 23 sex male nationality british 28th november 2006 circumstances stone to death place dharmshala state himachal pradesh stephen age 40 male nationality british 11th december 2006 hanged in a jungle roha maharashtra alina age 24 female nationality russian 8th may 2006 left dismembered on rail track revora goa and there are so many cases in up goa maharashtra and himachal pradesh drugs and narcotics indian tobacco control act 2003 narcotic drugs and 
Physiotropic Substances Act 1985. North Goa police have started an initiative in our seaside areas and are booking people smoking in public areas in disruption of the provisions of the Indian Tobacco Control Act 2003 that has goal at restricting smoking in public places in order to guard people from the danger of secondhand tobacco smoke. So students, let's now summarize what we have learnt in this module. There are many laws in India which affect tourism operations and activities and one must familiarize with these laws. Various attempts have been made by the tourism industry in India to work out the feasibility of having a tourism laws. However, these efforts are still in infancy stage and anything concrete has yet to emerge in this regard. Thank you.